Where's the break? <laughs> Once again today, the Prime Minister was searching for the controls. It's only gear. What gear is he? He didn't dare start the motorbike. It's the virus that's accelerating as Boris Johnson tries to slam on the brakes. We're looking at uh, a resurgence of the virus in uh, some other European countries. You can see what's been happening in the United States. And so it is absolutely vital as a country that we continue to keep our focus and our discipline and that we don't delude ourselves that somehow we're out of the woods or that this is all over, because it isn't all over. Especially not for those self-isolating. During the pandemic, anyone who tested positive for COVID-19 or had the typical symptoms of a high temperature, persistent cough, loss of taste and smell, had to stay in for seven days. But from this morning, that's now been increased to 10 days. Those they live with still have to stay in for the same 14 days. I still dream about watching his lips go from pink to blue to white when he died. Hannah lost her dad, Sean, early in the pandemic. She wonders if longer isolation could have extended his life too. It's led to a huge increase in unnecessary loss of life. I'm glad that these measures are here now. They've come far too late. They didn't save my dad, but they might save yours. But other countries' rules are stricter still. Our government says the scientific advice has evolved, but the World Health Organization has long stayed the same, recommending up to 13 days. It's very unclear why we chose a different approach right um, in, in March and April when there was clear evidence that people do remain infectious for longer than one week. And uh, almost all European countries and Southeast Asian countries had adopted a protocol of isolating people for at least 14 days. The Prime Minister was relaxed enough to spend time coaching police dogs today, but the change in advice is seen as yet more training for a second wave. Paul Brand, ITV News.